Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Now this week's going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm actually going to come away from wildlife this week. Um, people who've been watching my videos for a while will know that I do do other stuff. I've done a little bit of macro photography recently uh, and I used to do an awful lot of landscape photography. One of the things that I do enjoy doing is infrared photography and um, really that I was inspired to do that probably by what seeing one image it must be five years ago now I'm not even sure where I saw it it may have been on the internet um, doing a search for a particular castle and I found this image in infrared of uh, I think it's Dun Dunoon Castle possibly in Scotland and and the, the, the picture basically consisted of you've got this small semi-derelict castle on top of this mound and there's a pathway leading up to it and then there's an open iron gate at the bottom and done in infrared which gives it this really ghostly feel um, now for me infrared photography and in particular that image instantly rather than it just being a photograph it sort of transported me there to sort of be within the image if you like um, very rare thing to happen with a photograph I like to think when I'm taking images that, you know, um, they're technically reasonably correct and they show a nice representation of a place and, and are attractively quite nice. I think when you can get an image that actually transports the viewer to be stood as part of that image and having wild thoughts of what's happening going through the head, that's a real... Um, spectacular image and that's really what that image did for me immediately when I saw it I was you know has my car broken down a little bit further down the lane did I see a light from the top winner of the castle and think oh I can go and get some help there did I wander through the wood and then come across this gate and then the lights disappeared and then I'm thinking you know has somebody gone up there before me and they're waiting for me or has somebody come down for from the castle and he's now waiting behind me in the woods. It really does throw all these um, ideas into your head and that's why it's become one of my favourite images really. And after I'd seen that image I always wanted to try and recreate similar um, images in my own work. It's not an easy task obviously because Simon Marsden's a brilliant photographer so um, to get anywhere near it would be absolutely fantastic. I've tried various ways of doing it over the years. I've got a film camera that I use. Unfortunately, the film that Simon Marsden used to use um, is no longer available, and I think that makes your images suffer a bit. You can still get infrared film, um, but it's just not the same, I don't think. So what I want to do this week, um, something a little bit different in another way. I should also explain that at the minute I'm training for um, riding a sportive up in Scotland. It's not particularly long, it's only 75 miles, but it's on closed roads and there's a couple of decent climbs on it, something called the Tour of the Borders. So I've been doing a lot of bike training at the minute. So I thought what I would do this week is do a little bit of a tour around my own local area. So I think it's about only about 35 miles, but I'm going to take the camera kit with me and hopefully do a little bit of infrared photography along the way. Now what I'm going to use on this occasion is my Sony A6400. Now, I could actually do this with the, uh, the standard 50, uh, 16 to 50 lens that came with the camera. I could use that, um, or I could use my 18135. But what I've chosen to do on this occasion is, um, I've actually, I'll just take this off here. Show you, I've been on the internet and purchased for about 35 quid this is a Pentacon uh, 30 millimeter f3.5 um, and it says on there made in GDR so it's an East German lens um, I did look at a few reviews and this has got quite a you know quite a nice um, number of re reviews on a, a couple of sites so I thought it'd be useful to to use and you can use these lenses on cameras like the a6400 all you need is if you see on the end, this is the actual lens bit here. This bit on the end here is an adapter. Now that cost me about 12, 13 quid. It's a Neowar M42 to NEX. Um, 
So basically you've got a screw on this side to screw the M42 in and then this is the E-mount on this side um, to attach it to your A6400 or your A6000 or whatever, any E-mount Sony camera. And you can get these in various different combinations so you can literally link most lenses to most cameras. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, this actually, is, I mean, it costs 12 quid, but it's a really tight fit, which means it's not going to get any light leakage in there. It's actually quite nice. So that's the camera and lens I'm going to be using. And then all really you need on the end of that is an infrared filter. And this is, a, this is from SRB Photographic. You can get various ones on the net. And basically, it looks black. So I'll explain the process of using that. But yeah, again, you can get them from various manufacturers, various sizes. This is a 49 millimeter one, so obviously it fits this lens. Um, and yeah, what I'm gonna do is go a little bit of a bike ride, take you along with me, and see if we can uh, reproduce some of these infrared photographs. Anyway, I hope you like it. I'm gonna get kitted up, get on the gravel bike, which is ready behind me, and I'll catch up with you later. Right, five miles in and we've, uh, we've arrived at the first location. I knew one thing that I should have bought with me that I, I didn't and that's a micro towel because when I'm riding the bike, it doesn't matter whether I'm going slow or fast, I always end up absolutely wet through. And prob probably if it was colder today, I'd have a jacket as well, just simply to keep myself warm while I'm not riding. But if I turn around, this is um, the gates to Washington Estate and Literally for a long time, I thought the gates and the church were the only things that survived. Uh, the hall, I think, was demolished in the 1960s. I could be wrong. One of those where, you know, they just couldn't afford it, so they knocked it down tragically. And I have got some plans of that, actually. It would have been absolutely magnificent if it was still standing. But uh, what I'm inclined to do is try and get some pictures of the gates, because uh, I think they'll look quite nice. One of the problems you've got a lot with old buildings these days is you see we've got the barrier across the middle there so i'll probably come and try and get down the side and get the trees behind i'm also battling again with the light today with infrared photography generally you need really sunny days i quite like it because we've got a lot of cloud because that makes the sky a bit more interesting but i really need to wait for the sun to break through and uh, unfortunately that's getting less and less at the minute so i'm going to crack on and try take this and then i'll show you something else i found that I mean, I've lived close to this, probably three miles, uh, within three miles of this location for 25 years, and I just found something thin in the woods there that I'd never seen when I was out riding on the bike. I just glanced to my left and saw this structure. So I'm then going to have a go at that. So we'll go and set up and see what we can do. Ugh. Right, I've actually come across to the other side of the road because uh, one of the things we're shooting with a, a, um, a prime lens is that you are really ruled by the focal length that we've got. So this is 30 millimeter on a crop sensor. So it's like a 45 millimeter, I suppose, lens. So to get what I want in, I've had to come across to this side. Now, sometimes things that I think that helps you because what you tend to do if you've got a zoom lens is that you go to one position that you think's okay. And if you can't fit it in, you zoom a bit further out so you can fit it in. And sometimes by doing that, you're not forcing yourself to look around for perhaps a better angle or a better position. And um, it, yeah, it can be really, I suppose it's counterintuitive. You think, oh, well, you can zoom out and then you can fit it all in and that's it. But I think sometimes just having to stop and wait and think, I can't get it in, try it from this angle. Oh, actually this angle's better, you know, can help you. Right, so what you really need to do to take an infrared image and how I set this up is obviously I've got that East German lens on, which is a, 30 millimeter. What I generally do is set up the image without the filter on, because obviously that's black um, in effect. So um, just get everything in focus. And I, I quite like this, this lens because the 
the focus ring is not at the end so it's quite easy to set the focus up and you're not going to knock it what is at the end is the aperture so you actually set the aperture with this ring on the end uh, there so um, when you're putting the black filter on you're not likely to um, knock the focus which is what you don't want to do and what help also helps with this a6400 and a lot of modern cameras is obviously you've got the focus peaking so you know you can set that up so that basically it's really easy to set the focus so yeah set the focus up um, and then put the filter on you'll they'll then get a black screen so then all you're doing is I shoot in manual so then um, I'm shooting at the minute at ISO 400. I could actually go a lot higher than that because uh, one thing about a sort of a gritty Simon Marsden image is you'll find that there's a lot of grain on there. Sometimes I add that later. It depends what light I've got, but at the minute I'm at 400. I can take that easily up to 2,500 if I wanted, not a problem. And then, yeah, just wait for the sun come out to come out as it is now, wait for no cars to come past, which there's one or two at the minute, and then take your shot. There goes the postman. So yeah, for this shot at the minute, I'm trying it about 15 seconds. Um, ISO 400 and um, aperture is about F8. I'll always do as well as I'll take a number of shots at different settings. What I find tends to happen is when you get up to like 15, seconds the screen on the back of the camera doesn't really change so it doesn't really tell you whether you're getting enough lighting or not enough so i always set quite a few from probably eight seconds up to 25 seconds just so i can pick the one that i like best in post processing to mess around with and get that image that i'm looking for and again today i do like this dark cloud we've got coming over i'm just waiting for them bits where the sun breaks through because i want that to hit the foliage to give it that sort of nice white look um, one of the things I would say is you can have your camera converted to infrared. So what that means is every digital camera ha actually has a, it has a filter over the sensor to filter out infrared. And you can have that removed so it then picks up infrared really well. Now what I find with that is, is that the shot looks completely different to a black and white shot. So you know it's different straight away. It looks, it doesn't look strange, it looks different. Now if you shoot with what I find with the filter on, it lets, and this, um, with the infrared filter over your sensor, so you haven't have it, had it removed on a normal camera, and then you put one of these filters on, you get hints of infrared. So instead of it looking completely different and you're dismissing it straight away as different, you, it looks odd, it looks strange, and the odd and the strange is really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that to give that feeling of uneasiness that there's something strange going on, you know. And I think by doing it this way and not having the filter removed, it, it really does give you that. It's, it's like an in-between, if you like, black and white and infrared, and it just, it has an uneasiness to it. Right, I think I might actually stick up at Ossington today. The problem with it is, is I've got quite a few locations to go to up here that, um, it's taken me quite a long time. Part of it is waiting for the sun to come out. So if the sun was out all the time, it'd be a case of getting there, setting up and taking the shot. Now I'm having to wait 10, 15 minutes just for that light to get right. Um, it's not perfect today by any um, sense of the imagination, but um, it really does hopefully give you, you know, a, an indication of what you can do with this infrared photography. Right, I'm going to head to location two now. Um, I'm not packing anything away actually because I was riding up this road on the bike doing some training the other day and literally in the woods there, just to the side of the gate, there's a little, I thought it was a mausoleum to the start with. I'm not sure what it is. It's a, it's a morium to somebody, um, but it looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, as I say, I've lived here for 25 years, Th literally three miles from here and never knew that existed until I went past on the bike so I'm just going to pick my gear up and head off over there and hopefully um, 
we can get a shot there as well. Right, I've just parked the bike up. So literally walked 20 yards, but I really want to show you this because I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, it's hidden here among the trees and the nettles. I'm just hoping I'm going to get a little bit of light come through, but I'll just turn you around so you can see it. Absolutely stunning. In fact, I'll walk back a bit so you can get a better view. Um, do have a little bit of light coming through. Actually, I hope that, I know it's going to go back in, but as you can see, I'm going to try and shoot it from here, I think, but I'm going to have a wander around with a camera just to see if there's a better angle, but I don't know, it's absolutely beautiful. Right, so I'm really, um, what I've done now, I've taken the uh, ISO up to 800. As I say, I'm not really particularly bothered about that because uh, I'm not really up really that bothered about how much grain there is in the image I'll probably end up um, adding some anyway later in post-processing but I'm shooting at anything from sort of 8 to 15 25 seconds ISO 800 and um, aperture is probably about f7.1 uh, f8 again um, it's difficult to tell with this lens actually you, there's I don't know whether it's at, the lens has been taken apart at some point but there's no way of telling what aperture it, it's at um, there's no sort of marker to show you where it, where it is, so uh, yeah, you can turn it from um, f3.5 to f22 and basically I just leave it somewhere about in the middle, so, um, and then just tweak it either way if I want to get a little bit more lighting or a little bit less. So, uh, as I say, it's all trial and error, but I always try and take probably five or six shots at the same location just so that I can play about with the one I like the best when I get it back home. When you get your image back into post-processing, the first thing you'll notice is that it's red. Um, and really what you want to do is turn it to monochrome. So you can do that various ways. You can just convert it to grayscale, or what I do is um, just desaturate it completely. Um, if anybody wants me to do a video on how I process the images, then uh, please let me know and I'll see if I can get that sorted out for you. But it all starts with this raw image, and then from there you just post-process and what I'd, what I'd say with this is it's, a, it's artwork that you're creating. It's not a, what I'm trying to get is a feeling. A, I want to make people think about what's happening in that image. You know, I want it to be ghostly. I want it to be mysterious. So I'm not really bothered about an accurate representation of what it looks like at the time. I just really want to get that feeling in the image. So, you know, post-process to your heart's content, really, um, just to give you that piece of artwork that you're looking for. Right, so I've just come from the little um, memoriam up there. I'm just going to head down the uh, track behind the gates now. The gates are up here. The church is somewhere down here. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get a shot down there. I'm really happy today, actually. Um, I think the problem with if I try and do the whole ride, um, this is going to be an incredibly long video. And uh, I think actually, it just deserves spending some time up here. Um, you know, there's enough to do, and then I can probably do the other location separately anyway, uh, whether I bike out there or not, which I probably will. So yeah, I'm gonna head off down to the church and I'll meet you down there. Right, made it down to the church. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting little church. This is actually, where I was gonna to go to next today was um, a place called Milton Moore's Limb. This actually, looks very like Milton Mausoleum anyway. It's in the sort of same sort of style with these columns around the door. Not like a traditional British church, really. Um, and I do like this wonderful um, metal archway into the, uh, the church. It's a pity about the wooden sign again on the, on the gate, but there's not an awful lot we can do about that. So I might mess around with this first before I actually go up into the church. And I think I've got a slow puncture on the back tire as well, which is another reason not to head too far away today. Um, some of the roads or some of the gravel tracks I went on turned into something more severe that I probably would have been better on the mountain bike with, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I've given it a little bit of stick today and I don't think it liked it, but I'm going to do some photography here. 
and then uh, see what state the tire is and see where we head from there. Right, I'm just waiting for the light again. I'm, I'm shooting quite low to the ground on these shots simply because I'm trying to get some of the foliage in because of the trees because that is what sort of gets reflects the sort of infrared light better than anything else. I'm not really going to get any sky in this shot, it's just too overgrown with trees but I think a low level shot works better and what I've done I've just sort of got the the gate in with this gravestone behind it and the gate open. I'm going to try from the other side as well because that's quite a new gravestone so you know I'm not 100% on it but I just do like the ornate metalwork and with the old sort of light at the top of this gateway which is really nice but we're, you know you get these in a lot of churches and obviously it's a bit pot look what's behind it whether you've got the church behind it so you can see that through it or a nice ornate old gravestone or whatever so yeah it's not, you can't really move anything so you just you've just got to make the best of what you've got so I'm going to try from a couple of angles and uh, see where we go from there. Right, I've just come up to the church now and I've, I've been bestowing the, uh, the advantages of using this um, prime lens for the photography I've done so far because it forces you to sort of move around and try and see if you can get an image. One of the disadvantages is, I spin you around here, there's no way I can get this church in um, on the 30mm, which is like a 45mm equivalent on the... Uh, Sony A6400, so I'll have to come back and do that another day with a different lens uh, and another infrared filter, but you know, there's plenty of other shots to be had around here, so uh, I think what I'm going to do now is head down towards the, there was an ornamental lake here, the lake's obviously still there, I'm not sure whether there's a shot there or not, if there is, um, I'll have a look at it. Um, I might try a little bit of woodland if I get some nice light coming through, if there's some nice trees. And then I'm going to head my way back because uh, I don't think that tyre is going to pump itself back up. So uh, we'll see what we can get from there. Right, I think this is going to be the last shot for today. Um, I went down to the lake and it just wasn't really working actually. It's so overgrown. And uh, one thing about riding your bike and um, doing this sort of photography is, yeah, bare legs don't really work very well with... Uh, waist high nettles so yeah, I couldn't really get to the lake just too overgrown so I came back up actually and when I was going down to the church I noticed this this avenue behind me as you can see here and I just really love these really strong big branches that are overarching it so I'm actually just waiting for some light to come through at the minute I've got the camera set up with a 30 second exposure I'm shooting wide open actually because I just I don't really want the sharpness all the way through I want to try and get a bit of a dreamy effect um, but yeah I'm just waiting for the light at the minute so I'm at 800 ISO um, f3.5 and um, at 30 seconds at the minute so I'm just going to see how that works out as I say I'm just waiting for the light um, but yeah it's just really these big trees with the overarching branches that I really like that I'm trying to capture just to give it like a sort of tunnel effect and uh, as I say it just really needs the light and I've, as I've been saying this afternoon the, the light, the periods of light where the sun is coming through has been getting less and less as the cloud builds up so um, yeah it's a bit of a waiting game. Right so I hope you've enjoyed this video today, um, obviously something a little bit different from me but this is one of my as well as wildlife photography as a as a landscape photographer as well this is the the photography that i enjoy the best so uh, it's just something that's quite unusual and i just really enjoy it and i enjoy the effects that you can get with it so um i hope you've enjoyed it as well as i say if you want to know how i process any of these images then please let me know in the comments below and i'll try and put a video together for that as well um once you've got the sort of basic um, idea of what you're doing it's really then just a case of going to town and trying different things and getting out of the I suppose the mindset that you have sometimes as a photographer is that you're trying to 
capture a scene to accurately represent what you saw on the day. I think in sort of art terms, that's nothing to do with it. You know, you're not taking a picture to, for the police to say, yeah, this was the scene on the day, that's where the body was. Um, and you need to, to be as accurate as you can. You know, nothing's moved, that's how it is. That's how I saw it on the day. What you're wanting is an image that is gonna give an effect um, raise an emotion you know that's what you're looking for in art really you want something that's going to say something to somebody not that represents what you saw on the day particularly so yeah just go to town on the processing and see what you can come up with uh, as i say i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give it a like and a thumbs up and uh, if you've not subscribed to the channel yet then please think about subscribing and i will see you next week uh, for another video cheers see you then